Hello and welcome to CU 150, the show about technology, innovation, and entrepreneurship. I'm your host, Tim Montague, and we're joined today by Brian McIntyre, the director of the Small Business Development Center at Rock Valley College in Northern Illinois. Welcome to the show, Brian. Thank you, Tim. Really good to have you here. So um, it's, it's, it's great to have you in Champaign once again. Thank you for coming down. And tell us a little bit about your SBBC and the college and the business ecosystem up there in the Rockford area. Sure, Rock Valley College has been around since 1962. Started out as a community college and then 12 years ago they decided to expand what they were offering and um, got into a lot more different areas. So right now it's just called Rock Valley College. Um, our SBDC is one of five that actually offers specialties in uh, different areas. We obviously have an SBDC we have a technology specialty, we have an ITC, which is the International Trade Center, and we also have a procurement technical assistance office. Awesome. And uh, that means something to me because I'm part of the SBDC network, but it doesn't necessarily mean anything to our viewers. So let's throw down a little bit and, and start at the highest level at the SBDC. What do you guys do at the SBDC? Great question, and I try to keep things simple. So when people ask me what do we do at the SBDC, I say, we're here to help companies grow. Yep. Some of our companies haven't been born yet, so we help them get born. We have other companies who are in middle age, trying to get to old age, and we have companies who may be toddlers that are trying to get into school. So really, if you want to help your, if you need help your company growing, you call us. If you don't need help, yep. don't call us. Yep. And what is the uh, what is Rockford known for? What kind of companies are your hallmark? Rockford, uh, back in the 60s, was known as the screw capital of the world. We made more fasteners than any other location. A heavy industrial town, a lot, a lot, a lot of manufacturing. Um, in the last 10, 20 years, we've gotten into some advanced manufacturing. One of our key areas right now is aerospace. So in terms of my client base, I deal with probably 30, 40% manufacturing companies. Um, and then typical retail and those types of things are, make up the rest of our portfolio. Sure. Now you mentioned that the SBDC has some subspecialties. Here we have uh, the ties, the technology innovation entrepreneurship, and the ITC. Um, you have been intimately involved with all of those, but let's talk about tech, uh, tech innovation. How is that different than the regular SBDC? You've typically got a different type of client. Um, oftentimes they're more sophisticated. Oftentimes they're more what I would call inventorish versus improving on something. And most of our clients in the uh, technology sector up in Rockford have got a whole history of different types of inventions. So we try to give them specialized help. Yep. Yeah, inventors are, are a special breed, and um, it's a lot different than the uh, retail store. Now. Right, exactly. Yeah, a lot of uh, a lot of very brilliant tinkers, and, um, and and of course, people taking their ideas to to market. Now, you have a, a special facility up there for tech uh, startups, right? The Iger Lab. Correct. Correct. And let's let's talk about those services. Sure. We're a little bit different in the fact that we're not on the college campus. We are housed at a business incubator. For us, the incubator is the Iger Lab. Uh, the Iger Lab is an extension back in the day of Ingersoll Milling Machine Company. Um, the building that the Iger Lab sits in used to hold roughly 1,500 engineers um, for the Ingersoll Milling Machine Company. Uh, when they went out of business, the Iger Lab was taken over by a group that was into micro machining, mm -hmm. where they would make machines that could write your name on, say, uh, a human hair. So there was a lot of work done on micro machines. Unfortunately, it was all grant funded. That passed away about seven, eight years ago. Okay. And then the Economic Development Group, Rockford Economic Development Council, took over the Iger Lab. Um, started to manage the assets, worked out a partnership with the college. So really, we're about three main things at the Iger Lab. One is uh, there's a group called TechWorks. TechWorks will help um, people learn how to become what I would call a basic machinist, maybe a NIMS one credential. We've got five machines out there. Um, they have classes, eight to ten people in a class. It's an eight-week course. 
and you can be accredited machinist when you get out. Mm -hmm. You're not going to make fifty-five dollars an hour, but you could probably make fifteen to twenty dollars an hour mm -hmm. after eight weeks of school. Okay. Second thing that the Iger Lab has is a prototyping facility where we do three D printing. Uh, we have two three D printers, which is great for my clients because if they need a prototype done, uh, we can just shoot it over to the folks at the Iger Lab. They can typically turn out a uh, um, prototype in a matter of days. And then the last thing is the entrepreneurial support. So there's the SBDC offices, there's the Kai's office, there's the, uh, um, we have a, uh, a member of the U.S. Commerce is there. Uh, it's really a one-stop shop for any entrepreneur in any type of stage of his life. And so do those entrepreneurs need to be affiliated with the college in any way, or it's simply they're dealing with the Iger Lab and if they fit the specifications for the lab, then they're in. Correct. If it's, they do not have to be affiliated with the college at all. Okay. And so if I'm, a, if I'm an entrepreneur with an idea and it has something to do with, uh, you know, this, the, these, these sub-disciplines and, you know, let's say I'm making a physical object, so I'm doing prototyping, 3D mm -hmm. printing, machining maybe, um, and... I want to incubate my company. What happens to them as they come in, and what other services does the lab offer them other than access to these core facilities? Do you have, for example, entrepreneurs in residence or some other resources that you know that other incubators have? Sure, we do have a couple of part-time entrepreneurs in residence. We don't have anybody there full-time. Sure. So you just set up office hours, and, and they're available um, during those times. Obviously, you can rent space. So the Iger Lab is very flexible at how they rent space. You can have one cube, you can have three cubes, you can have an office, you can have um, ten cubes. And I think our largest client at the Iger Lab has probably got, I'm going to say, the equivalent of 30 cubes and half a dozen offices. So you can expand and contract as needed. Great. Um, you know, the internet's paid for. Your furniture is paid for. Basically, if you want to incubate at the Iger Lab, you show up with your computer, your phone, and you're good to go. And is the office space uh, competitively priced, subsidized? How does that work? It's dramatically below market. Okay. And again, the, the goal is to get the entrepreneur there, get him the support that he needs. After three years, the expectation is he can go out, he's grown, he can now afford market rates for him. Exactly. And at any one time, how many companies are you know, in the, in the incubator? It's typically between 12 and 20. Okay. Any, any uh, success stories in the time that you've been there? I would probably say our biggest success story we had a, a group, uh, an inventor, and he'd spent a lot of time in manufacturing, and he came up with a design for a different type of speaker. So he played with the design. He got prototypes made. He played with the design. Um, and at this point, um, he's now realized that he didn't have a management team. So after we worked with him for a couple of years, he started hiring uh, folks to, to help manage him and begin the, the sales process of the business. As you know, inventors are typically all about the product. He needed people in to help with the business. Yep. Um, last December, he won an award at the Chicago Electronic Show. He's also gotten awards out in Las Vegas. He now has partnerships with Pioneer and those types of folks. Um, the last time I talked to him was a couple months ago. They are starting to ship product now. So it was a, a long, long time. This technology is such that it's just going to revolutionize the speaker world. Hmm. Wow, cool stuff. That's a, that's that's a, that's awesome. So, what else uh, should people know about uh, the SBDC in Rockford, and who's an ideal client for for your SBDC? I'll give you the range of clients. Obviously, we have uh, one person who comes in doesn't have a company, has an idea. Uh, so it would probably be the lower end of the spectrum. Our biggest client that we have, uh, roughly 45 employees, does around $20 million in sales. Mm -hmm. So those are the two extremes. You know, for us, we, we look at it where, you know, obviously we're funded with taxpayer dollars. So if you come see us, we're not going to charge you a, an hourly fee for our consulting. Um, but we look at it as somebody who has a challenge in their organization. They can't get beyond the challenge, and the challenge is keeping them from growing. So that's a client who, you know, really can't afford a specialist. But if he wants help getting overcoming a problem with his business, he comes to see us. Right. 
Yep, that's pretty much um, what we do here in uh, Champaign Urbana as well. And um, you know, it's it's those. I would say the sweet spot for us is companies with a couple of employees uh, who are staged for growth. That's an ideal client. But we'll work with anybody who you know comes to us, and uh, many of them need additional other resources, and we and we help them get connected to those. One of the things we offer up in Rockford is we have something that's called a C team, and a C team is short for commercialization team. Okay. And if you if your company's got the a few what I would call minimal requirements, and we're looking for you to be in business at least three to four years, we're looking for you to have at least a million dollars in revenue. Mm -hmm. um, but what we can do with the C team is we ask volunteers from the community to help that particular company overcome their particular problems. Mm -hmm. So if your issue is maybe HR or something, right. we can get HR specialists, we can get um, HR attorneys, we can get recruiters all involved in a presentation that the client would do in an effort to help them overcome his HR issues. Mm -hmm. So it's not just the expertise at the IGRA lab or at the SBDC, but we get the whole community involved. And how do you uh, are those teams dynamic then? They're kind of brought together on a, on a one-off basis? Exactly. That's yeah. exactly right. So, again, depending on what the challenge that the client has, mm -hmm. it depends on the folks that we would invite to the team. And the best thing about that, and as you know, too, you've been doing this long enough, people want to help other entrepreneurs. I mean, yeah. there's a give back that folks want to do. Um, it makes their business stronger just by helping somebody out, and it makes the community stronger. So. You know, we've probably invited 500 people to CT meetings, and the only folks that can't come are those who are out of town that day. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we, we definitely organize uh, meetings with people like that, but we don't have any program or formal process. And, and so that, that get, gives me an idea about uh, how we could explore something on a, on a little more formal basis. Um, so. What is it that separates entrepreneurs, people that are really going to build something and and grow a company, from people who simply have ideas but really not the wherewithal or the drive to make it happen? I think in my mind it's those who are going to turn it into a business and make it happen are those who seek them. And by that, I mean I don't mean just the SBDC or our mm -hmm. ecosystem. Mm -hmm. you know, nobody can do it all by themselves. Yeah. So those who think they can do it all aren't really going to go as far as those who get help mm -hmm. and, and go on. Mm -hmm. So to me, that's probably the biggest mm -hmm. difference I would see between those who want to do and those who will do. Yeah, that's definitely a mantra in my uh, advising work. You know, I, I help entrepreneurs realize that they need partners and team members. Uh, I think a, a group of three or four people is much, much more likely to succeed than one really smart person. I don't care how smart you are, you just have a limited amount of time and energy, right? And, and knowledge. Uh, and yes. knowledge, yeah, of course. And uh, so, so what else should entrepreneurs know, um, you know, who, who see this and want help? How it, how hard is it to get help from an SBDC? With our SBDC, um, you'll call our office. Um, typically, you'll talk to my assistant because she's on the phones a lot. Um, and we're probably going to screen you, depending on what type of resource you need. So if you're going to look at starting a one-person retail shop, we're going to put you with our counselor who can best do that. Mm -hmm. If you're looking at starting a technology and building an app, we're going to put you with our technology counselor. Mm -hmm. If your issue is dollars or finances, I've got a counselor who would just work with folks on dollars, budgets, and finances. So, again, our goal is to try and match you with the person and the skill set that's going to solve the problems you have. Today. Yeah. So let's zoom out a little bit and talk about the bigger economy. Now, Rockford was, as you mentioned, a major manufacturing economy, heavy industry. Uh, what's the status of that? economy in northern Illinois today, and is there a lot of uh, manufacturing left? We've lost roughly 20% of our manufacturing jobs since 2000. Mm -hmm. 
Um, we did have a period of 65 straight months of unemployment that was in double digits. And that ended in May of this year. So we were going on five and a half years of double digit unemployment. Um, we're trying to get workers retrained into other areas. Something more done by the economic development folks and the folks at the college, sure. more so than what we do at my office, but we're still in a blue collar manufacturing town. Um, we have a Chrysler plant that's uh, right outside of town, doing extremely well. But as you know, they do have their rough times as well. Yep. And um, with the International Trade Center, is 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 that business kind of on the on the rise now as well as the manufacturing? Yeah, company? it is. It is comes back. Um, we're becoming more aware in Rockford that there's a whole world out there. You know, we used to think if we serviced the U.S. economy that that was good enough. And through our ITC and our economic development folks, they've made a major push to help companies sell overseas. And we actually have a three-day seminar once a year, usually held in May. Yeah. It's all about international trade <clears throat> and going global, for instance. Yeah. yeah, because America is so big, it's it was easy for us uh, you know, in the 50s to 2000, I think, basically, to just sell to America. And now we see that the growth is in Asia, in India, in China, in Korea. And and so why shouldn't we sell into those economies that are growing like gangbusters and have growing middle classes? It makes perfect sense. Yeah, we have. I mean, Rockford's probably got, I'm gonna, last time I looked, roughly 800 machine shops that have less than 10 employees. So, you know, they think, well, you know, we can only sell local, we can only sell state, we can only sell domestic, and those who think like that are struggling. But those who think, you know what, my product, I can sell my product anywhere in the world, uh, right. they go to the international trade, they learn not only that they can do it, but how to do it and the steps to do it. Makes life far, far easier for them. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, it's, I mean, it's interesting, there's, there's almost like that, the big old industry manufacturing economy had has gone through a transformation and now there's a lot of smaller more nimble and leveraging high technology manufacturing companies coming online um, and I think that we've really just seen the early days of that uh, we, you know there is a boom in say nanotechnology mm -hmm. uh, microelectronics biotech and so much of this stuff is about building a physical widget, but integrating these high-tech elements. Sure. I mean, we've got probably one of the better video conferencing rooms at the Iger Lab. So it's not unusual for us to have video conferences with people all over the world looking at an engineer drawing or doing those drawings online with each other. You don't have to be face-to-face -to, -face to get stuff done. Yep. Well, um, anything that we didn't talk about that we should talk about? Yeah. Really appreciate your Way time. Ahead. Thank you. Thank you. And I look forward to seeing you at the ASBDC next week in Grapevine, Texas. This has been CU 150 with Tim Montague and Brian McIntyre from the uh, Rock Valley College in Rockford, Illinois. Thanks, Brian. Thank you.